I know I'm tired, but I need to make this right now because we're not going to have enough time tomorrow. Okay, so to start things off, first of all, I'm going to rip the band-aid off right now. I do not like Robert Downey Jr. coming back. Yeah, there. I said it. The atmosphere is all gray being in Hall H and all that stuff, but from a guy looking in, I the, honestly, I read the headline and immediately my first thought was just like, but why? I'm sorry, but why? Um, and even then you could maybe push it that he could be a Tony Stark variant but here's the reason why some people are jumping to the conclusion they're going on Twitter and saying he's gonna be a, a Tony variant that turns into Doctor Doom but I'm like I watched that snippet of the panel and Joe and Anthony Russo said that he's gonna be playing Victor Von Doom not a Tony Stark variant so it makes even less sense I'm like why didn't you just cast somebody else we already like what did you say that we already cried for him. We already, we already, you know, cried. We already went through the whole mourning stage. We're done. You know, move on. Let's move on with a different actor. We're just recycling and asking and sucking and dry, asking for more. Yeah. So, anyways, but that's besides the point. That's almost probably an entire other video as far as those, the big takeaways that we had with Comic Con. Let me divulge into what my key takeaway of Comic Con was as an experience. As like a finally going for the second time after 10 years back, almost exactly 10 years back when I went, first went, because I technically went once before in 2014. 10, huh? 2014. In 2014, exactly 10 years ago, I did go to San Diego Comic Con once. I got lucky enough to get badges. Uh, but I went by myself. I literally didn't have any friends, didn't have her. Um, we didn't start dating until literally the next year. And literally since we started dating, we were trying every year to get badges. And finally this past year, November, 2023, we finally nailed down badges uh, for three days. I, th I think we could have gotten either Sunday or Thursday. Um, not all five. I, I don't think they're actually, I take it back. I, I think preview night was gone, but I could have gotten Sunday, but I just said, you know what, let's just do uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I feel like that ended up being for the better because now uh, we're recording this Saturday night. Today was our last day, so I can officially kind of commentate on uh, San Diego Comic Con as an experience from someone who's been there for the first time, someone who's been there a second time, but it's been 10 years, a literal decade since I last went which almost constitutes as being like the first time, especially being post pandemic. So if anyone's probably digging up these videos after Comic Con Pass and wondering, oh, what was the experience like? Should I go next year? This is your answer. Uh, and uh, you know, we arrived at, you know, this, that, uh, I, we boiled it down to this analogy that we were coming up with on the car right now while she was having a conversation with her sister, where there were, she was asking us uh, how's Comic Con and all that stuff. And, the best analogy that I can think of is like having waiting quite a while, quite a while. You're starving quite a while for a chicken entree and the chicken you get is really well seasoned. It's got a nice crisp on top with that nice little like skin that's kind of crispy that tastes nice. But then the actual meat of the chicken is incredibly dry. They overdid it and it's dry. So even though taste is good as far as, like I said, the seasoning, the flavors, the marinade, and they got a good crisp, the actual meat of the chicken entree is dry. So you're kind of just chewing, 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 and you either need to go outside of the entree, which is the sides or your drink to have a better entree experience. And I think that's probably the best way I can summarize Comic-Con 2024 and why at the end of it, I frankly told myself, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. And I, it, which is sad because you do know that returning attendees do get early priority. So you know how we waited until November to get badges. If we wanted to go again next year, we get first dibs or at least the first opportunity to try in September, they announced it. So is that when we were in the hallway, they were all, who's been here every year? Who's been here for the festival? It's some of the people that have been returning it, they were uh, leapfrogging it. They were leapfrogging or grandfathering it, if you want to call it that. That's pretty much what they were doing. That's what, so it's not, it, so if, 
yeah, the people that were have been going for like the past 10, 15 years, they made it a tradition. And so when they got that first taste of like early badge priority where they get it a two months in advance from the general public, they got them. So if we want to go next year, we could do it in September before the general public who have never gone before. But right now, I am not afraid to admit that I'm kind of good. I'm kind of good. And like she was saying that, you know, the, the, the golden era of Comic-Con, you know, was probably in that middle of the MCU uh, time where the movies were good and by proxy the conventions were good so 2016 2017 where doctor strange was hitting civil war was hitting uh thor ragnarok is where um uh we had a couple of the panels i remember one of the big san diego comic-con panels i think was 2013 where we just had avengers and we had your man <laughs> take stage as loki Remember, you know, that's like one of the big ones where everyone's like, oh my, because he wasn't on the planner. He wasn't on there. They, they, they were going to talk about Thor, uh, the Dark World, but there was no mention of the Tom Middleston or anything like that. So when the screen went dark and you just heard, worship me or something like that, and then it lights up and he's right there and he's just telling them to be quiet. He's in character. He was loving it. That like that was one of those good, really good moments. And then fast forwarding to 2017, where they announced that or was it 2017? No, uh, same year I think uh, they announced Josh Brolin as Thanos, because oh, Guardians was wasn't out yet. Yes. So it was that same year where they brought Josh Brolin on stage. It was all that crazy commotion. But now fast forward, like I said, almost literally a decade later, and what did you say? I don't know. I felt very. I felt like I was walking into, I don't know, you know when you walk into a theme park and you're waiting in line for hours and hours on end and the ride keeps breaking down, you go get some food, it gets, it's expensive, it's not even that great. Same thing with the, what is it, with the, when you buy the toys and everything like that. I use Disneyland, of course, because that's where we go. And not even the, the, what is it? The items at the gift shops or everything, nothing, nothing was enticing me. I saw things that I liked, the nice sailor moons and my books and all that, my lounge fly. Nothing called if, to me. Nothing was like, oh yeah, you know what? I really want it. I, oh my God, I need to have it. Nothing. It was, it was really sad. And, and that's not to say that, it, 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 oh, well, honestly, to piggyback on to what you and, said, and that's it. Even if, huh? Yeah, that's what kind of disappointed me about this set. This is her first Comic Con, and I can barely remember my first because, like I said, that was literally 10 years ago. I remember the stink of these f***ing crudded up neck beards in the, in the corners that wouldn't shower, which thankfully was a bit better this year. There were still some pockets of BO from time to time, but I can honestly say that's probably one of the more positive um, symptoms of COVID is that apart from diluting the population a little bit, uh, they were also able to get some people to actually think about their hygienics when going to these conventions and things like that. Um, that's not to say that I really would have liked. I mean, I'm sorry. This is just my opinion. It's up to you whether or not you want to act on it. But my personal stance, there should have been. There should be more people masked up. I really don't understand why the ratio of masked people to not masked people. I mean, obviously, I can't read if they're vaccinated or not, but just the ratio is insane to where it's like, hey, you could stare at me all in one. I'm masking up. I masked up the entire way. She mostly did, except for a couple of instances where she needed to breathe a little easier. Going back to what I was mentioning about uh, Robert Downey Jr. coming back as Dr. Doom during the Hall H panel, I only got off of that, again, from the headline because I was keeping up with it on Twitter. Hell no that I never bother to hit up Hall H. What's the point? Hearing these stories about people starting to make line in like Thursday night, Friday or something like that for Saturday. That means that as I was kind of taken away from some other YouTube channels that were talking about Comic-Con and kind of developing Comic-Con strategies and things like that, saying that time is your greatest currency apart from actual money. And I'm like, yeah, do I just want to sit in one line just for one panel? And it doesn't necessarily just have to be Hall H. It could also be some of the bigger ones in some of the other bigger rooms like 6A, 6AB, 6BC, or no, 6A, 6BCD, Ballroom 20, and the Indigo Ballroom. 
or can I try to prioritize like a number of different panels for some things that will like, at least give me some information on some upcoming stuff that's pertinent to the channel, something that I can use for to drive traffic to the channel as far as like community posts, something that will just, I, I don't know. I just felt like the trade-off was, I'd rather sacrifice something like Hall H and, and things like that. But to harken back to what you said about over, uh, commercializing is that you were saying that you were going to the floor trying to find books and things like that and that's e anything interesting and the stuff that isn't interesting you can't really f***ing see because you don't have time or oxygen to see <laughs> because the floor is a, it, oh my god I just I like I said it's probably just a sign of me turning into a as kids like to call these days unk now you have something that's just kind of developed naturally in me after, uh, you know, being over 30 years old. Uh, but this foot traffic is just, I just can't do it. I, I, I can't. It's just, to me, it just doesn't compute having all these great displays and boots for some of the companies that I am very excited for as far as not necessarily maybe Star Wars or Hasbro because of the quality of the content. Winky, winky, nudge, nudge. But... Say, for example, McFarlane Toys in the DC booth or uh, Tamashi Nations with their ACH figure art stuff. Uh, the, and then across the way, there's stuff with the monster arts, which would be anything that's like Godzilla related. And then another section where they have the jazz wares, another section where they have uh, Mesco and, and things like that. They have like these pretty decadent, pretty sophisticated looking boots, but I could really barely stop to even and you'll probably see a little bit of cut footage here and there from Friday and Saturday. No, I'm sorry, uh, Thursday and Friday, where it's so jolty, and that's because I can't get any room physically and metaphorically to either film, get a good shot, pull up my gimbal to try to set it up, forget about it. The foot traffic is just constantly going a la the, what do they call it, the Autobahn? Over there in Europe, that circular thing that's always going. Oh yes. Is that what they're calling it, the autobahn? That's pretty. That that's what it's called, right? I think it is, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's kind of how the foot traffic is on the floor during the exhibitor hall, to where I just can barely see anything. I, I'm only hoping that some of the footage you're witnessing right now managed to capture at least some of those boots. And then when it gets a little. The, 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 it becomes a little inverse is at the other end of the exhibitor hall where you have the smaller boots for regular vendors that rent out a spot to sell some of their wares. You know, what are you buying type of thing. Um, but the problem with that is that a collectible show that I often have mentioned to my friends but also to people here on the channel is a place called Frank and Sons in Southern California in the Orange uh, area, the Orange County, California. No, I'm sorry, City of Industry. City of Industry in California. And it's basically as if you take the floor plan of Frank and Sons, but then with the audience or the foot traffic of a Comic-Con. Those two things are not gonna mesh. So even though you have smaller, more intimate boots, the spacing in between them is just too, it's just too much. To where I am now going to show you footage of Saturday, specifically when the Marvel Studios Hall H panel was happening. And it's a night and goddamn day difference. There's actual flooring that you can actually see, that you can actually walk through. I can breathe, she could breathe. No one's tripping over each other. There was actually one instance on Friday where I was squeezed between two people and I had to audibly be like, guys, please, to get their attention to like move because I'm a skinny guy so I'm obviously going to be overlooked and just uh, you know almost virtually trampled because to them you know a lot of these guys like I said let's just say there's a reason why they take the escalator instead of actually you know climbing up the stairs and therefore an awful lot of their surface area is not going to feel something as tiny and scrawny as me and I'm over here trying to fear for my life but then come Saturday like you've seen in the footage here infinite walk space oh my god unfortunately it just happens to be on saturday where they close the floor a little earlier at seven and her and i only had about an hourish maybe uh actually maybe even less than an hour because that and rice panel went over a little 
even they went over a little they went over for like 10 50 minutes um so we only had only about 45 minutes and i didn't feel too too bad about it because by then it's saturday that we're talking about an awful lot of exclusives are already sold out because of preview night because of thursday but again that's where the foot traffic is from so it's it's a, it, it goes back to the thing about the panels where you either dedicate to a handful of boots where you can browse maybe find something kind of nice something kind of intimate and personal to yourself that you want to buy or you have to spend literally the next hour at the dc booth or the next hour at the 100 percent soft booth for like these little exclusive pins or two hours at uh whatever insert pokemon event here inside of the exhibitor hall so again going back to the analogy that i was mentioning it's like a chicken that has some good seasoning which would be the flashiness of the boots the production value but then the dryness of the actual meat which is to actually get some substance out of this whether it be buying that exclusive that you've been wanting out of the exhibitor hall or witnessing that panel that you would love to see like hall h or and when I say Hall H, not just Marvel Studios, but even going back to a couple of days prior with what we do in the shadows for her or um, the penguin for me or God, what else were, were they talking about in some prior days in Hall H? I don't know. But uh, yeah, there were some panels that even I had to give up and be like, yeah, that's not going to happen. I gave up like literally when I was putting together the schedule where I was like, yeah, we'll have to do that. It's Hall H. I, I instantly forgot about it because there's some people there that are probably going to be taking out those spots just so they can hit be front and center come Saturday. So then when I mentioned the analogy, you lean on the sides or you lean on the drink to help you out wash the dry chicken down. That's where you get your offsides. That's where you get your secondary panels in the smaller rooms, but then they end up being a little bit cozier. They end up being a bit more direct and intimate to be able to talk to the people who are holding those panels down. Of course, being a, a little biased here, but obviously McFarlane, every time that he has, the, there's this like easy feeling that I get with this panels where even he's not sitting down. He, met, he even confesses at the beginning of the panel. He's like, I'm not going to sit down. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm just gonna, I'm just going he's either like one foot on top like that on the on the chair or he's walking in front of the stage and he's just talking um and you know he open he, he always saves time for people at the end to either do a QA or to uh, mention some kind of comment or whatever uh, you guys will see some of the video footage here and then you know while keeping things kind of relative to the channel as far as McFarlane versus Marvel Legends yes the difference is still felt when contrasting McFarlane Toys' panel versus the Marvel Legends panel, which I also attended, which is a little bit more compact, a little bit more corporate. There was barely any, uh, there was no Q&A whatsoever. They didn't allow anybody to really talk about, if I remember correctly, they spent like the last 10 minutes on a HasLab that we have to fund. Yes, I'm really, really we have to find in order to make it a reality and then when they reveal the big figure that's getting funded everyone in the room is like yeah yeah and i'm like is that i don't i don't know um and again i could be i could be subconsciously a little salty of that because there was literally nothing spider-man related mentioned at all even though the punisher two-pack looks kind of neat um there were some other kind of uh, other figures that I took photos of and videos of that you'll see right here. But of course, you had the Marvel Legends guys right there. And just and a lot of things that they were mentioning was just a little bit on the corporate speak. That I'm just that, that just feels very uh, numb to me. Like, I'm not going to say it sounded terrible, but at the same time, I'm like, you guys are not really moving my needle as far as excitement or anything. And it, what, the one you know little reveal that did get me a little... Uh, interested, uh, I mean, I already locked down pre-orders for, which is the Deadpool 3 or Deadpool and Wolverine, Deadpool and Wolverine figures that look actually pretty nice and pretty, especially since I was actually thoroughly impressed with the leg movie legacy Deadpool 2 Deadpool that came out just a few weeks back and I covered it on this channel and you guys received it very well. So I figured, you know what, let me uh, try my hand at maybe locking down a pre-order for this new Deadpool with the newer accessories and uh, maybe you guys will see a review on the, on the channel. But of course, that also means, undoubtedly, that I went and pre-ordered some of those newer McFarlane's that got released, like the Dick Grayson Batman, the 66 Adam West Batman, the Batman Superman Fusion with the weird costume, 
Um, I technically did pre-order the cowl, the one one cowl, but I only did with like Big Bad Toy Store or uh, Entertainment Earth. Even though I am partial, I'm still keeping an eye on, on uh, Amazon because for some reason it's cheaper there. And uh, yeah, it's Comic Con. I mean, I'm still pretty satisfied with myself that I experienced it, but. Again, going back to that analogy, it's like, okay, you know, I'm ready to try a different restaurant. Whether it be maybe WonderCon. I don't know if you'd be down to try WonderCon in Anaheim. Uh, yeah, we did go one. Yeah, and, we, and we did it. We did enjoy it, right? Yeah, we did enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. That, like that one, I remember walking away going, hey, I'll be down. I mean, I'm saying it right now. I'll be down to try WonderCon in, in Anaheim. Um, but yeah, we'd send you a Comic Con. I was just. And. Honestly, I think I have, I have more of a memorable happy. Time with WonderCon? With WonderCon. <laughs> and now comparing the two, yeah, that's how it feels. It's, I don't know, I was really excited. Like, you know me, the first day I was jumping up and down like an idiot, like I always do. And I don't know. And I it sounds like you jumped a little too much. Yeah. I think to I, the part where you fell on your face. Halfway through the day, I don't know. Once we got through it, I, I don't know. I wasn't excited at the end of the night anymore. Like how you said, oh, okay, two more days. And the last day by before today, you were like, oh. One more day. Yeah, last night I I told myself I was really depressed with myself because when I finally came home after those first two panels of uh, McFarlane Toys and Marvel Legends, uh, I said to her, like, I, I'm so sad to think that I'm over here just thinking to myself, well, one more day. And I'm like, wait, I shouldn't be thinking this way about Comic-Con. I shouldn't be thinking, oh, we only got one more day to go. It's like... In a, in a happy way. I wasn't like it, saying it in a sad way, like, oh, it's almost over. No, I was like, oh, it's just one more day to get through. But it, it was like a job. I'm like, it shouldn't be like that. No, we should be excited. And to answer the question, one of these days I did go by myself because uh, this one unfortunately had a, uh, a bit of a bout with heat stroke. That will, I'll spare you guys the slightly graphic details, but she did legitimately scare me Thursday night. And that also kind of fed a little bit into the overall feeling of Comic-Con where, uh, you know, I'm not saying that it's like uh, a her fault or somebody's fault or anything like that. But it's just like taking her her experience and applying it to the every person. It's like imagine someone going through either a heat stroke or some kind of malnourishment or some kind of thing in an effort to get into a panel that's only gonna last about an hour and then you still have to walk back to your hotel walk back to your car walk to this walk to that uber here over there i'm just like nah man call me old but i think i'm calling it a wraps on san diego comic con unless and i told her that the little asterisk would be if i get actually invited as a content creator it, where, if there's like some kind of landing page where i can apply as a content creator to be like all right, I look at my YouTube channel. I cover either Marvel Legends or McFarlane Toys. Let me sit in for those two panels. Let me live stream. Let me have an interview with Todd, uh, an interview with Dan, Dwight, and uh, and uh, Ryan from Marvel Legends. Uh, although I don't know what good that'll do because there, there's only so much that they can talk. Jesus Christ, I've seen some of those interviews. <laughs> and um, yeah, it, it, that would be the asterisk. Or if I get invited for another specific offsite event, which I'll make a separate video for uh, involving a, 112, a, a new player in the game with 112 figures. That is uh, kind of exciting. It's actually uh, something that I'm looking forward to talking about more on the channel because a new challenger approaches, Smash style. So that'll be uh, pretty interesting. And I feel like that warrants its own video. But for now, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what, uh, what other thoughts I have. Apart from that, you? I don't know. Like I said, now having gone to WonderCon, having gone to Comic Con, I don't know, I just, I felt there wasn't that much love from the community itself, us. Not even just us, because like you said, we're probably getting older. But I know it was hot, but only a third of the people were maybe even dressed up. Um, I felt like I was going into a really sad Disneyland, walking in, long lines. And like you said, we spent all this money to go to these events and we can't even set foot in it. There was line caps, cap, forgive me, left and right. 
Um, there was it, it all adds up. Yeah, it was. It's not there just the badges. Causes. It's the Airbnb that we're currently uh, recording this in. It's the travel. It's the parking spot that I have to pay for. Um, it was. It was. It's not, there was positives. I enjoyed the panels that we went to. The I like the fact that we got to watch the exclusive at the bat, the Batman um, the King Crusader episode. That was amazing. I love my Anne Rice panel. All of that was amazing. There were things that you were actually excited and looking forward to. But I didn't leave wowed. I didn't leave like, oh my God, I want to come back. Maybe like I was saying in the golden era, like you were saying, the civil era of time, end game time. Maybe back then there was more excitement, more love. But now I don't know if it's the times. I don't know if it's us. But I feel like it's waning. That excitement is going. And it's sad. Maybe maybe it's right now because we're barely getting through with the economy. They're Movies are barely coming out. Marvel's barely getting their shit together. DC's the same thing. Maybe it's because we're in a weird time right now and things aren't okay with directors, movies, everything's all funky. Maybe that's part of it. But I don't know. This year, it was it was a little sad. I came back. I'm gonna give it like a a C. Maybe. C rating. I'm gonna yeah. Give it a C rating. WonderCon. I was more excited for WonderCon. I think I had more fun with WonderCon than this. I'm just overheated and tired at the end of this. Honestly, that's just how I feel. I'm not like, you know, when you go to Disneyland and there's at least Disneyland when you go there and you saw freaking Mickey and you at least saw that and you have that excitement. With this, I don't I don't have that remnant of joy. Like, I at least saw Mickey. Here, I didn't get to see Mickey. You know, I didn't get that part. I didn't get that big joy that I was expecting to have. I was just like, okay, it was cool. But... Maybe in a couple years, if the movies can get their shit together and everybody can get it together, maybe. But I don't think I'm a hop for next year. Not next year. And we weren't the only ones. I think I did see a couple of instances on either Twitter and Reddit where some people were saying that it was mismanaged the the lines communication. I actually got a little bit of experience from that where they told us. Uh, they told uh, you know we saw it a little bit this morning but I saw it yesterday by myself where I went to one line they told me to go to one line and when I go there they're like do you have the disability sticker and I'm like no and they're like oh you're not supposed to be there you're supposed to be over here nobody told me nobody said anything so you have to these volunteers can't be hired on the spot they have to be like I think briefed and trained on some shit because yeah and i'm not the only one like i said if you go on the comic-con subreddit i think there's a handful of other people saying yeah th there were some really weird uh communication issues where some lines were just not handled uh the correct way a lot more people uh i saw like two you know apart from her uh i saw two other people that were we either wheelchaired away or gurneyed away from what i can tell it looked like they were also suffering from heat stroke or exhaustion or something like that to where it's like they, they need to be taken out of there and they had to call the paramedics and, and things like that. And I'm like, I, th I don't think I even saw this once at WonderCon or hell, even at my last amusement park yeah, visit. Yeah, during the summertime too. So all these events, it was summertime. Yeah, those other events were summertime as well. So, I mean, I understand that, you know, global warming is kind of kicking the earth's ass, but at the same time, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's very difficult to put it into numbers. Love us, love you. But that's not like uh, Denzel said. I'm not going to walk away empty-handed. After he lost his Oscar the first time back in 1988, he's like, I'm going home with something. Oh, that was fucking good. Yeah. What? In our, um, oh, was, uh, uh, compliments to Queen Studios and Inart for inviting us to their event, which, like I said, I'll cover in a separate video with the exclusive footage. Well, not exclusive footage because others recorded, but I mean, I, I was recording with my 4K camera with like certain angles and that Dark Spider David flare, so hopefully you guys will see some of that. But uh, at this event, they had a goddamn charcut 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 charcuterie board or charcuterie spread that this one over here was just enjoying <laughs> way too much. Christ. I went back like three times. <laughs> yeah, you went there three times. You filled your plate three times. But admittedly, it was that, it was like uh, Samuel L. Jackson said in uh, Pulp Fiction, it was that gourmet shit. It was uh, that mustard that's like $10 a jar. But then once you taste it, you're like, well, kind of tastes where the $10 is going. Um, 
uh, along with the like the little breads and the or the crispy chips that's like really hardened bread and, and all these things so she really enjoyed that uh, on the eating side you're probably gonna see some photos here of some of the foods that we had around the area such as this really nice uh, waffle that we had at this uh, what was it uh, oh a TV cafe TV cafe where she had a very healthy veggie kind of bagel <laughs> with like avocado and arugula and what else I had avocado, arugula, and I think I had cream cheese. And cream and cheese. I had, yeah, on an everything bagel. I had a big ba basic waffle, but it was fluffy enough to where I'm like, you know what, this is all I need with some powdered sugar and syrup. So that was pretty good. Um, yesterday morning, since this one was still trying to recover uh, on, from her um, heat stroke episode and her knees were still kind of giving out and, and wearing down on her. I went by myself, but I stopped at a place called Spill the Beans, and you'll see right here that I decided to have a bagel of my own. And this time it was a simply another everything bagel, but filled it with a... God, what was it? It was a... Like white truffle spread with Parmesan cheese flakes. And it was actually pretty damn good. I almost finished the entire thing, but it was a combination of panels starting along with starting to get a little full that I'm like, you know what, uh, I'm done with it. But uh, I, I barely left anything. It was actually a pretty nice uh, bagel that I almost completely finished along with my coffee. And then this morning, uh, this one decided to cook us uh, some French toast and eggs. Even though I can officially say that liquid eggs, not my jam. Uh, they're good probably for other functions, but when your your main thing is an egg, gotta crack an egg. It's not liquid eggs. Um, and then as far as like eating, uh, today we just came back from like a pizza joint that I actually really liked. Yes, I'll confess I liked it. I did like it because they did something with the dough that they made it look kind of focaccia y in terms of like the air bubbles inside and it was pretty tasty. You'll see some photos here. Um, what did we have for dinner yesterday? You cooked. The, you made tuna patties with broccoli. Um, did I take a picture of that? I don't think I did. Um, well, then again, some of you always do. Um, and then what was our dinner? Oh, the pot pie. Oh. The pop. I had a sausage roll and a pot pie. I can't remember if I took photos. If I do have photos, I'll try to splice them in here if I remember correctly. Um, and it was pretty good, even the amount that she ended up throwing up afterwards. I only took one more chocolate. Uh, unfortunately due to the heat stroke it wasn't because of the food the food was good but it was unfortunately the heat stroke episode that she suffered afterwards that landed to that so um yeah overall like i said uh, we walked away with that with some actually some pretty good eats yeah. it was actually some pretty good uh eats that we either created our our own or we found our, around right here and there is a little bit of swaggage that did come our way of course we got the badges they're right here uh, which are gonna serve as pretty good me mementos, but at the same time, like I said, I'm I, the way I'm feeling about Comic Con. Who knows how long those will last? Uh, as far as like I said, major major exclusives, I didn't really walk away with too much because at the same time, like I said, I'm trying to save up money. Uh, we're we're trying to move in, we're trying to make things happen, and I am starting a new job, which will hopefully make that a little bit easier in the coming weeks. Uh, but at the same time, like I said, I I, I didn't want to. I wanted to spend a little something to kind of commemorate Comic-Con, but I didn't want to go crazy like buying the hot toys or anything like that. So Again, it I, wasn't, there wasn't that even that big of a selection it. anyway. And I found a booth that I, and I'm not even exaggerating. I found a booth that was selling hot toys and it's literally the exact same ones you could just find on SciShow right now for probably about 30 or 40 dollars cheaper. Like that Sonar Batman, he was there. He was 260. He goes for 250 on Sideshow, and never so often Sideshow themselves has a sale to bring it down to just a flat 200. So just wait. Apart from that, they didn't they didn't have they didn't have anything that's like oh released in Hong Kong and they imported it over here before Sideshow. Not, like nothing like that. They didn't pull like a 1.6 kit or anything like that. No, it wasn't nothing insane like that. So I got us some pins. You know, when all else fails, just get yourself some pins. Uh, oh yeah, yours is over there. You have one over there where unfortunately her stopper came off. Basically, the day that I went by myself, I thought I would surprise her in an effort to make her feel better. Uh, with some pins, I got her, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show this off on camera because it's, it's not focused properly. So we'll see how this works. So you can see right there, that's Ariel's silhouette from The Little Mermaid. 
That's one right there. Uh, you got Sailor Moon resting on the moon right there. A little bit of a girthier one. Pause. So those are her two and then my two. One of them is the GameCube controller. I was gonna get the GameCube and the controller up until they they snuck one on me and was like, oh, they're they're sold separately, even though we kind of put them together up on the board. Really? But I digress. So I thought to myself, you know what? What's a little uh, more iconic is probably gonna be the controller because the GameCube, as much as I love the system, it's just a cube, whereas the controller is one of the best controllers ever made. I love this controller. And I'm pretty certain the majority of people love this controller. Why? Because to this day, Nintendo's still making it for the Switch. And then lastly, Darth Vader. But I'll cut to a specific shot here once I get home in my light box as to what makes this Darth Vader pin so special. You can remove the mask to show off Anakin, a burnt, a crispy Anakin Skywalker underneath. So I thought I, I saw a video of this like literally back on like Monday or Tuesday saying, hey, we're going to have this San Diego Comic-Con exclusive pin at this exact booth. Check it out. And when I saw it in action and saw them pulling out off the mask and demonstrating it, I was like, I, I need to get it. I, I need to get it. I need to track it down. So that's really about it for like the smaller stuff. Uh, as she mentioned, we managed to catch a the first episode of Batman Cape Crusader at the exclusive Amazon Prime uh, panel where they screened the first episode and then they spent the last 30 minutes talking to the to Matt Reeves, the executive producer, as well as three of the actors, one of which is uh, one of the most awkward actors that has ever graced the San Diego Comic-Con panel, but I love him for it. Hey, Mitch Linklater, who's going to be voicing Batman, is doing a pretty good job at it. Uh, but as a uh, goodie to walk away with, even though we had to go to the hotel next door to go get it after the event, was a really nice looking laminate, well not laminated, but it's like in plastic poster of Batman Caped Crusader right there. You can see it's actually embossed. So a little bit of the wording and Batman himself is actually kind of popping out. And then over on the McFarlane side, McFarlane, Ever the generous man threw in uh, his leftover <laughs> page punchers uh, for some of us when we were walking into the McFarland toy panel. So uh, there that is right there, if that could focus. Um, so yeah, there you go, page puncher. I got the Shazam, which I'm kind of indifferent towards, which I thought, you know, it's still a freebie, it's still a nice a little superpower, little minifigure for free, but then I got a little salty knowing that some others in the distance did in fact get Batman DC Rebirth Batman Superpower figures. So I was like, damn it. And then as far as, I guess, free swag, that's really about it. You know, you got some programming, some Ultraman program for that new Netflix show, whatever it's called or whatever. Um, that's really about it as far as free, well, free swag, paid swag, paid swag as I like to call it. I already covered the pins. As I said right there. Uh, and then for me personally, of course, I needed to prioritize because I know I'm going to be making a video and you guys are probably going to want to see said videos. Uh, needed to prioritize the McFarlane exclusives. And among them is, of course, going to be Bruce Wayne and Ace from Batman beyond gold label san diego comic-con exclusive i was kind of hoping there would be some sdcc 2024 labeling on it but there isn't so that's a little bit of a bummer because that also kind of leads me to believe that it's probably going to be available it has there's a chance it will be available later on so i'm kind of like all right i hope i didn't go through the trouble for no reason but at least i get early dibs a lot of hands and ace right there so look forward to a review of this guy right here, a Dark Spider David review, because like I said, there's already a handful of reviews out there of the guy, but none like the way I like to film things. And then it's still in its shipper, and I've yet to decide if I'm gonna take it out of the shipper. Uh, I likely will, but I'll probably cut away to some footage of it once I get home. But basically, inside of the shipper is the DC Superpowers 
Trinity black and white with accent go label San Diego Comic Con <gasps> exclusive, which has Superman, Wonder Woman, and Batman. But apart from that, that was really about it. So those were the key takeaways. I tried getting the Hot Wheels uh, Batmobile set and that was unfortunately already sold out by the time I got to the Mattel Creations booth. Even though I mostly blame myself for that one because I know that it was also available online, but even then I hesitated. And I always tell myself if I hesitate for something, that means that the likeliness of me wanting to actually buy it in the first place is probably not there. And it is lending to FOMO rather than actually genuine desire to want to own it. That's why it was a no no brainer to get uh, Bruce Wayne. But the Mattel uh, Hot Wheels said, I'm kind of like, uh, maybe, maybe not. That's why, like I said, I had the ability to buy it that morning, but I still ended up not doing so. I rather prioritize pre-ordering uh, McFarlane toys because I know that those are going to be reviews on the channel for sure. Um, so I didn't get that. There were some plushies and some other pins that I would have loved to have gotten her, but the line, it's just, it's insane. And then the other day that I was available to go, they were doing a ticketed only uh, time slot. And so I couldn't because I didn't have any tickets. And again, it, it all just leads to something that makes me go, is Comic-Con really worth it? And that's definitely a question you need to constantly ask yourself if you made it to the end of this video, which I know went on a little too long, but this was all in a service of a long-winded way of saying that I think the time of Comic-Con, at least in the traditional San Diego sense, might be coming to an end. And maybe this kind of gives a little bit of credence as to why some negotiations are happening in the background for this to move to Vegas. There's some talk. Really? Yeah, they, it's legitimate. Yeah. They 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 re they re <laughs> they re uh, negotiated a contract for at least next year for sure. So next year is for sure happening in San Diego. But 2026 is the year where they're like, are we gonna have to move to Vegas because hotels are gouging prices? Yeah. Because they know that people are coming for Comic Con. Um, maybe Airbnbs might be following next. This one was reasonably priced, but. There's no guarantee of that happening next year, right? And so all those things combined, along with, like I said, the negotiations, maybe a change of venue will breed some new life. Maybe along with it will come a new management team, a new security team, a new team of volunteers that are actually briefed on how lines and queues and panels work. And uh, in the process, like she said, breed a little magic in there. And who knows, maybe by then uh, Marvel will get back on its uh, footing. DC will have some legs and maybe Comic-Con will be the way that it was back in like the mid to late 2010s where we had the time of Infinity War and we were all just losing it with that exclusive footage of Infinity War. We were like, oh my God, Doctor Strange is helping uh, Star-Lord, uh, you know, fight Thanos and everyone was losing their shit and that made Hall H worth it. And here I can look at Hall H and those announcements they were talking about and it's just reeks of desperatism and I'm like, yeah, Hall H wouldn't, wouldn't have been worth it. Uh, and that's more so of a commentary on Marvel Studios than anything else. But at the same time, even some of the, like I said, the experience of walking the floor, going to these panels, exhausting ourselves, one of us almost dying. Uh, not really, but, you know, it was a pretty scary situation. And, and then attributing that to the fact that she's probably not the only one. It kind of puts the... the the reasoning for there to be a San Diego Comic Con into question. And if you were to ask me right now, I would say no. It's not worth it. Those Hall H headlines will literally hit a minute later, not even five minutes later, a minute later. And you'll probably get a better viewing experience from the comfort of your own car or home or whatever. And if you're doing it for the experience and have at you, there's no right or wrong on that. I just feel like you need to be informed of what's coming and I'm hoping that what you took away from this almost like 40 to 45 minute video was that takeaway. And those are my official thoughts on San Diego Comic Con 2024. Like I said, I'll make a separate video talking about that in our exclusive event that I got invited to. I'll make uh, separate videos, reviews on the 
Batman Cape Crusader. I'll have to look and see what the embargo is for that. I did put my opinions over on Twitter, but at the same time, I want to be able to do like a full edge video on episode one. But at the same time, if they're dropping all the episodes on August 1st, I might as well wait on, until August 1st to watch the entire season and talk about the entire season as a whole instead of just doing weekly thing. I don't know. I'll see how that all works out. And then, um, you know, look forward to reviews on, of course, Batman and Bruce Wayne. I mean, I'm sorry, Bruce Wayne and Ace from Batman Beyond, that exclusive. Maybe a review on that DC Trinity Powers, or maybe not. That's kind of like a 65, 35% no. I don't know. We'll see. And uh, other content. I have a package waiting at her place that I need to pick up. Um, as well as a cu couple of other things coming down the pipeline, finishing up on some reviews that I'm editing. And so hopefully you guys will bear with me because like I said, I try to do different things with my reviews. They're a little lengthy, but for good reasoning. I try to Christopher Nolanize my reviews because they're long, but there's a purpose for them being long because there's cutaways. There's close-ups that I need to do. There's, you know, we got to move the camera. We can't, I can't just be another toy reviewer that just props up the camera and says, Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, yeah. I'm not doing that. And uh, there were some experiences in Comic-Con that reminded me why I don't do that and why I do the videos the, the way that I do. And that's at least one thing, well, one other thing, apart from this one still being alive, some of the good eats and the inner event, the probably the other one takeaway from San Diego Comic Con is at least being able to, as the kids like to say, touch grass with what it is that I know I do that nobody else does. And I don't feel like I really needed to describe it apart from t simply telling you to look at my last five videos. And there's your answer why. Till next time, guys, stay humble, and I'll see you later. Buenas noches. Buenas noches.